Audio feed is going though. And now, yes, we are live. What's up, guys? Hello to Periscope, Facebook, D Live. Is YouTube gonna connect? Yes, right on. And then Twitch should be here as well. Hello, everybody, and everybody on Talk Stream Live. You've been, you heard me before. We just before we started the video stream, TalkStreamLive.com, or TheHakeReport.com/show. Or even jessieleepeterson.com slash show has a live audio feed. Isn't that cool? While the show is live. I am going to be talking about some interesting things. A real hero has passed on and a, and a fake one too is being so-called honored by dishonorable people. What a disgrace. It is Thursday, July 30th, 2020. And it is 9.04 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. You can call in 888-775-3773. I will get to you guys. Appreciate it. So, let's get on with the show. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, you're gonna, it's the You're going to show any pictures? Okay, crap. La, la, la. Hey guys! Oh, it's the hate the hate la, la, la. So, what's up, guys? I think I'm still streaming though, because we're doing this. Are we still streaming? Yeah. We we continue to stream. We drop. Am I correct? We did not drop. Right. You have to do a little bit of closing out and reopening. We didn't show you any pictures like we normally do, but that's because, because of the wonderful things he does. <laughs> we're do we're trying something new, and actually, maybe maybe that's what messed it up, or maybe it's just in time that we're trying this new thing that helps prevent the drops. See my. Black Tech is looking out for me. <laughs> they, you know, they've been dropping like crazy. And the computer freezes and stuff doesn't work. But we brought in something new that even if the computer freezes, we, the show still continues. So that's nice. Appreciate you guys joining. Somebody says, great hair. Somebody says, you can do more curls, James. Thank you. I definitely can. <laughs> Uh, he just switches it over. He changes up the key, Nick, so that it works. Yes, so it does work. But maybe it did mess it up. Who knows? <laughs> Whatever. <clears throat> so, you know, um, Sean Lewis, I've told you guys about him. He was pro he was pro-abortion, anti-school choice. He was for LGBTQIA madness. He was for minors being transported across state lines to get abortions. He was for partial birth abortions. And now all the most disgusting people that you can think of, whom you can think of, both Democrats and rhinos, are, uh, are so-called honoring him. As we speak, there is a boring, uh, terrible funeral going on and pay no attention to the sleaze who are heaping praise on the failure, the late failure, who uh, is being honored, so-called honored. Remember, remember these people, Nancy Pelosi, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and then this kid... Child who is being, who was, has befriended, had befriended the late so-called civil rights hero, John Lewis. And remember to take everything that they say with a grain of salt. They are liars. Herman Cain, Herman Cain was a better man. The, the, the CEO of Godfather Pizza at one point. Still working, right? I think it's still working. <laughs> nice. Appreciate it. Thank you to Black Tech. We got it fixed. Some kid said that 
John Lewis changed his life, or, you know, so CNN claimed, right? This guy, I saw he was speaking at John Lewis's funeral, which is going on right now. It's being carried live on Fox News. And President Trump has been talking about it. Fox News has changed. They seem to have lost their way, for, forgotten who brought them this far, right? <laughs> And, uh, this guy, this kid, this child, John Lewis' kid, not John Lewis's kid, but a child. Did John Lewis have children? Um, held this sign, this ridiculous sign, saying, Thank you, Representative John Lewis, you have shown me how to have courage, raw courage. Selma was the turning point, he said. He held this sign. I don't even know if that's this boy's writing. Tiber, T-Y-B-R-E, Fa, in Selma, Alabama, March 2018. So, this boy met up with John Lewis. He traveled seven hours to meet him back in March of 2018, I gather. And they met again just before he died, I guess. Maybe. Changed his life forever. How John Lewis befriended a young boy and changed his life forever. As if CNN, this is, was a, this is a headline from CNN Politics. As if CNN, Dana Bash, Jeremy Moorhead, Bridget Nolan, as if these people lo- have any love for children. Sick. Uh, <clears throat> this boy spoke at John Lewis's funeral. And it was... So touching, because they like to exploit and use children, just like what Hitler did. Um, you remember those, that Sing for Change Obama thing? All these people down in, like, Venice Beach, this Asian lady, did this, had this little children's choir, and they sang these songs to Obama and the change, and yes we can. Stupid stuff. John Lewis, by the way, he wrote an, he wrote an op-ed... Well, he wrote a letter, right? And I guess he submitted it to the New York Times. Somehow the New York Times got a hold of it, and they put it out posthumously. And he said, together you can redeem the soul of our nation. And that's this stupid cliche that Joe Biden, who is supposedly white, but a betrayer of what's right, always says, I'm running for president to... For in a battle for the soul of the nation. Yeah, because you want to kill it further. A sick person. John Lewis died July 17th. A better man than him. Herman Cain died, I guess, July 30th or maybe the, maybe the day before today. Today's the 30th. But he's... He doesn't care about souls. And he's not, he was not a Christian. This John Lewis guy, yes, he was by name only a Baptist. Well, I mean, I guess it's very typical of Baptists to not be real Christians. And there's these, like what, like what I told you with this boy. That's that brainwashing of the boys, of the children, really. Boys and girls. And it's an, a, a big appeal to ego, too. Oh, this hero, I became friends with this hero. And it's an ego trip for John Lewis, too, to have a child looking up to me, an innocent child. Stolen innocence. Gross. So he issued this call to action in his posthumous op-ed. Obama talk, is supposed to give, deliver this eulogy for John Lewis. I don't think he's talked yet. Bo- George W. Bush, whom we used to like. I say we, I just mean I. (laughs) I used to like him. But he turned on the country. And maybe he was never really as for the country as I maybe thought. I didn't know better. I voted for John McCain, who was another John Lewis type, just resting on his past as though his past was a testament to his courage. When in reality, it doesn't take courage to show up to a protest and get beat up. It doesn't. It doesn't take courage to be flying around, get shot down and captured, get 
get uh, tortured. It doesn't necessarily mean your courage. You had any courage ever. And what the present, how you lived, how you continue to live is far more important than the so-called big things that happen. By the way, Obama was talking, uh, talking trash about Trump, talking about him assaulting women. If anybody sees plainly the obviousness of the attack on men, whether you're whatever race you are, even if you think, oh, even if you don't see the attack on whites, which I don't know how you can not see the attack on whites, but some black callers and people think, oh, there's no attack on whites, la la la. Yes, everybody sees the attack on men. The Me Too movement and stuff. And Obama is part of that. He talks about, he brought up past accusations of Trump's quote-unquote assaulting women. What a sick person. That's Barack Obama for you. And he warns of his efforts to push nativist, racist, sexist fears and resentments. What a sick person. That's Obama. Pushing these fake ideas. Pretending that uh, America is a racist and sexist country. <laughs> By the way, it's less than 100 days to go until the election. Crazy. Three months. Whoa. Um, he, ro- he raised $24 million. That's a lot of suckers, or a lot of rich suckers. Or a few rich suckers, right? <laughs> $24 million is not that much to some people. Yeah, three months is close to the length of Jesse Lee Peterson's suspension. Jesse Lee Peterson, if all goes well, we'll be back in time for the October surprise. (laughs) They say in the presidential elections, there's always something that they always call the October surprise. Because the election is early November, and it's usually late October something comes out that's supposed to, to change what's going on. I think in, I think the October surprise was, I think it came out kind of early last time, earlier in October, where Trump talked about the grab him by the P word, but that was from a 2005 secret taping. It was a hot mic, basically. It wasn't, he didn't say it in public. He doesn't, hasn't, there's no evidence that he's repeated it, but they act like it's such a terrible thing. Oh. Um. So yeah, Obama's fake. Just like the rest of these people. There's this wild-haired black guy talking right now at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. Sick people. By the way, I've come across some interesting footage of Jesse Jackson and Jesse Jackson's son talking about Jesse Lee Peterson. Make sure you are uh, supporting Jesse Lee Peterson on Patreon and Subscribestar and elsewhere. Because we will be getting to that stuff in the coming, probably in the coming weeks. But it's disgusting. There's this actor, George Clooney, sold out of tickets that ranged from $250 to as much as $250,000 for this fundraiser for Joe Biden. George Clooney is the guy who, he pretended to play Batman one time or a few times in these ridiculous movies. And he also played this doctor, and he was an Obama lover. Lover. Not the real kind of love, but the... I don't know. I don't know what George Clooney even is. I almost want to say white guilt type of love. But suckers. Very much suckers. And by the way, Joe Biden is not even really the nominee yet, right? to be a Dem- the Democrat opponent to Trump, but he's the so-called presumptive nominee. Yeah, what is that guy? Is he a normal white? I don't think, he's not a Christian. Um, Politico accidentally reported that, that Joe Biden picked Kam- Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris? As his running mate. (laughs) The one who's just became a joke. Just a nasty person. No appeal. And I don't even think it's true anymore what Obama said about her. Because he called her the prettiest or something like that. Um, Attorney General. Because she was the Attorney General in California. 
Can you believe it? The California is such a disgrace. Now it's this guy Becerra, I think. This Hispanic guy. Attorney General. The top prosecutor. The top law enforcement official in the state. And these people are pro-illegal alien and all kind, pro-abortion. Everything evil. They're for. So, it might be... They're, pri- they're trying to get him to pick a woman of a woman of color, a black woman, for a running mate. Thinking that he'll beat Trump. I don't know. Are you guys thinking, are you guys concerned that Trump might lose? I don't, I just can't get concerned. First of all, we have no control over it. So it's like, what's the point in worrying? But every time I see Trump, despite the actions that you may wish that he may, would take or take sooner or take stronger, every time I see him, He's fighting. He's like, with, with words and with his persona, with, with strength, it seems like to me. So, and he's standing strong even against, I hope that he continues to stand strong, President Trump, against this kneeling thing. You heard on the Jesse Lee Peterson show this dumb line that a whole bunch of people are supporting kneeling for the anthem as a valid form of protest and no it's not it's a it's a nod to a disgusting person Colin Kaepernick misguided person honestly who doesn't know what he's talking about and the whole black lives matter people like I to- like I say all the time are not what are the, what is it they don't have a leg to stand on <laughs> you guys were laughing because I was talking about this woman who's had uh, four amputations saying that she I wasn't saying that she doesn't have a leg to stand on I was referring to the whole Black Lives Matter movement and the media that's supporting it shout out to R- White Rabbit Radio hosting the Hake Report thank you man are you guys the ones who put out that um, anti-racist Hitler <laughs> talking about diversity is good <laughs> that's a good video I haven't I don't think I've been able to find the full video on YouTube lately I had it saved, but, you know, YouTube has been censoring a lot of the best content. Such a shame. I shared a, I shared a video of Apocalypto, where it was dubbed over by this guy from... It's called Apocalypto Yucateco, <laughs> whatever. And it's this guy who's just... He so, sounds like he's in his room, and his children are sleeping in the other room, so he's trying to be kind of quiet. But he's voicing over this scene from Apocalypto, the Mel Gibson movie, in which these Inca or whatever in- Aztec Indians are chasing after another Indian who's more innocent than they are. And they're trying to kill him. And he jumps over this, uh, this big waterfall. And you hear the, the Mexican guy going, ah. <laughs> but I can't even find that one. It was... Grabbed by a copyright thing. YouTube really clamping down. Election meddling. Free speech meddling. Attack on truth and everything good and creative. Such a shame. But the majority now support kneeling during the anthem. And honestly, I don't believe this poll. And I urge Trump as if he needs it. Stand by your principles, Trump. He's like the only one speaking out against this. I want you to stand. In my country, you're going to stand. As long as I'm president, you're going to respect the country. He said that about the dumb squad. Those females, so-called congressmen of color, female congressmen of color, Democrats, progressive, which means means anti-American, really. That's what progressive means, really. I think. Maybe I'm being extreme. (laughs) Is it extreme to say progressive is anti-American? I think it... I think that's what they are. And I know that progressive is not even as extreme as Antifa, right? But in a sense, they are. They support Black Lives Matter. That's evil. It's from a CBS News article. This, it was a dredge headline. Most now support kneeling. And I still think, guys, even though Tucker said it, that his website resembles like a progressive left-wing website sometimes, I think that's an exaggeration. I wonder if he would have said it if Blake Neff were still the top writer for uh, Tucker Carlson. Blake Neff, the great Blake Neff. Call us Blake Neff. (laughs) 
He's in hiding. Blake Neff, well, I don't know if he's in hiding, but Blake Neff was an excellent white guy, smart, young, I guess. And he wrote so-called racist, sexist stuff on this website anonymously, but CNN doxed him. And then they fired him. They say he resigned, but he was forced to resign by the li- liberal females who are now running Fox News, or female-minded male. Um, most Americans, claims CBS, view professional athletes kneeling during the national anthem to prote- protest so-called racial discrimination, is, which is not even real, as an acceptable form of protest, but there are divisions among political, racial, and generational lines. Right on to Trump. He's the best um, of all those things. He's a boomer. In, but an old school style boomer. Not a, he would, I don't think he was ever a hippie. Um, he did, I guess he was a product a little bit of the so-called sexual revolution. Because he was having a lot of sex, I hear. I don't know if it's the case. Um, but he's not a sucker for this dumb, fake, white guilt. Fake. And he's... <laughs> And he's a Republican now. He used to be a Democrat. And he's a, he's a stronger Republican than these Ted Cruz, whom I used to think was a strong conservative. He exposed him as kind of fake. As in terms of just being a f- phony politician. And I like Ted Cruz. I hope he uh, gets real and snaps out of it. Black and Hispanics think it's acceptable for athletes to kneel during the national anthem. What a disgrace. People, uh, you know, all these people, too... These are the same people who don't believe in actual freedom of speech. Isn't that interesting? How they're for, they're against freedom of speech, against freedom of speech, against freedom of speech, and now all of a sudden, when it's a half black or whatever, this Colin Kaepernick guy, and all the uh, dumb people following him like lemmings, kneeling and pretending that this thing was real, this George Floyd thing was a real case of racial injustice. It was just, it was just a case of a cop putting his knee on the neck of a guy, in reality. And more often than not, it's going to be, or more commonly than, than they're represented in the population, it's going to be a black guy getting in trouble with the cops. Oh my gosh, I have this story for you guys from, it's not even really a story, but it's this ridiculous cause pushed by Uber Eats and other people. Uber is a really awful organization. As a protest against racial discrimination, white people are divided with just over half saying it is unacceptable. That's, what a shame against white people. Whites, you're going to be history if only 52% currently... Yeah, look at this. They're promoting the, this is Uber Eats and Wings Showdown. And they're promoting scum of the earth like Snoop Dogg. And I like his raps okay. At least the old ones back when he was young and fresh. Not anymore. He's kind of old and crusty and angry and nasty. And a joke. Very trendy. Very mainstream. What a sucker. But they're promoting this... Center for Police Equity. And they pretend they, you know, they hide behind this science stuff, which is really fake. But 48% of whites supposedly think it's acceptable. And supposedly they broke out the Hispanics. 62% of Hispanics think it's acceptable. 88% of blacks think it's acceptable. 12 thinks it's unacceptable. That's nice. That's kind of encouraging. 12%. Blacks, right on. Have some sense. Think it's unacceptable. To be kneeling. Wow. Right on. This is White History Month. Right on to those 12% of blacks. We'll take what we can get. 38% of Hispanics. That's a healthy minority of sensible Hispanics. Right on. But 52% of whites, not... (sighs) They must be counting a bunch of other people. Usually Hispanics are counted in with the whites, but I don't know. Did they mean white non-Hispanics? Yeah, yeah, I cannot trust these polls either. You know, people, people, there's all this intimidation and I don't agree with it. Yeah, Joel was like, how come I didn't get to vote? I didn't. 
My vote counts as 10. <laughs> Even though I should do more curls, according to Flat Earth Destroys the Slave Matrix. Shout out. <laughs> Thanks for uh, the, the uh, ongoing support, man. <laughs> I gotta read some super chats and get to some calls. I just, I had to share that with you. It's silly. I think that Trump will continue to stand on his principles and on what's right. Man, you know how these, I told you guys how these people with these riots, right? These riots. And there's a few different, like, trying to be so-called peaceful. They have a little bit of civilization left in them. <laughs> Just not enough to preserve civilization. Um, they are trying to peacefully protest the police because they're such suckers that they believe, oh, the police are racist against blacks. And they're, they're brutal. When in, when in actuality, it's the blacks and it's the the illegal alien gangs and others who are being brutal for the most part is not cops but um there was no nuance with the tea party and i told you guys about this yesterday i don't want to get too much into it but there is no balance to what they tell when it's supposed a so-called right-wing protest charlottesville the only man who stood on the truth and he stood alone i think i don't think any republicans stood with him was President Donald Trump. He said, very fine people on both sides, violence on many sides. Which is accurate. I think it's accurate. You might argue that there's, they're not fine people on the left. Which is fair. But he's being kind. <laughs> but yet, truthful, I think. Shout out to Jesse Lee Peterson and Dark Side of the Bear What hosting the, the Hake Report. Appreciate that, guys. By the way, did... There, I guess there was no White Wednesday yesterday. I saw a hate farmer went live. Shout out. Right on. Um, just curious. Stu Tay gave a diamond and said, put your corona goggles on. Yeah. I, at first I thought you were talking about something, a phenomenon called beer goggles. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about with, with my show? You guys have to put your beer goggles on for my show? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Made me nervous. Because <clears throat> Corona is like a Mexican beer. But no, he's referring to this COVID virus, this Chinese virus, right? And Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's supposedly the top infectious disease expert. I don't even think he's really a fi an infectious disease expert. He's just been in the government for a long time and has a doctor a doctor title to his name. I don't think that he really knows all that much what he's talking about. Certainly not in life, because he was, at least not in 2013, he was, in 2012, he was a Hillary Clinton fan girl, practically. I say fan girl because the way he was acting. I, I should say fan boy. He was kind of boyish, but he's girly. You have to be girly to fall for Hillary Clinton. And it, it was her speech about, this is Fauci. You guys, probably most of you know about this. But, you know, after the Benghazi situation, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton went to Libya, right? To co-found ISIS. They're the co-founders of ISIS. Obama, Hillary's the founder and Obama's the co-founder of ISIS. That's, I'm paraphrasing what Trump said. But over in Libya there was a security crisis and they asked for more security. The, uh, the um, person who was an ambassador to Libya, I believe, who happened to be homosexual, but that's irrelevant to this story, he got killed and other Americans got killed by a terror attack. And they said, oh, it was a protest over a movie that mocked Muhammad <laughs> in the movie. We saw clips of it. It's so stupid. You couldn't imagine people rioting over this movie. And anyways, they're making excuses for rioting. Where's their excuses for these whites who are um, continuously mocked and marginalized? <laughs> you know, the alt-right. They're constantly being called Nazis and stuff. Where's the excuses for them so-called rioting? And they don't even riot for the most part. But anyways, um, after Hillary did that, she's all... Maybe they were, maybe it was just a couple of guys going out for a walk and thought they'd just attack the, our, whatever, compound, whatever. 
American compound in Benghazi, Libya. What difference at this point does it make? She said. And Anthony Fauci sent an email to her people after that saying, that was a great performance, Hillary, we love you. <laughs> and he's in the government. And he's like a bureaucrat. Anyways, that's Fauci. So, and now he's saying, put, it's good to wear eyewear because, and as I say it, as I was reading this in the Hake News today about you should wear your, you should wear goggles or eye protection, eye shields. I was feeling my eyes. I'm like, oh man, I hope I don't have a uh, mucus infection. You have like mucosa is what it's called, which I think is mucus membranes or something. This guy knows a little bit more than me, but he doesn't seem like a trustworthy guy. But yeah, he's the one of the top guys at, in the Trump administration task force on this COVID thing. Dark Side of the Bear What says, Based AF, Based America First. Black Tech, do you use that for the dark web? <laughs> I don't know what the dark web is. I forgot. Patrice O'Neill Groiper gave a diamond and said, John Lewis was a traitor. Whoa. And he says that he's glad he's dead. He's glad he did. Huh. That's strong, Patrice O'Neill Groiper. But, um, yeah, he was a traitor to what's right, to America, to the blacks he pretends to care, pretended to care about. That's definitely true. I don't know, are you supposed to be glad or not whether somebody's dead? I don't know, but... So I'll just leave it as that. Appreciate the diamond. Joe Maddock gave a diamond and said, Hake is a CNN loyal viewer. <laughs> I read their emails. I don't know. Joe Maddock gave a diamond and said, When will Hake be red-pilled? Research Flat Earth. I don't know. I'm not that interested. It's hard to get me to research anything. You guys have told me about General Pat Patton. And I've even heard President Trump praise General Patton. And I think there's going to be a monument, a statue, a new statue to Patton in the Garden of American Heroes or whatever it's called. You know how they're tearing down the monuments and statues? Um, Trump is building more monuments and statues. Because he builds, he doesn't destroy. He builds up America. He's a uniter. Um, so it's hard for me to want to research anything like that. But I appreciate that. Joe Maddock. Fan of the ladies gave a dive in and said, You remember Scruff McGruff? Chicago, Illinois, 60652 PSA. I remember McGruff. I don't remember his name being Scruff McGruff, but I do remember that dog. And I don't remember the, what the PSA was, the, the public service announcement. Uh, da Okie Doke said John Lewis was a great man. <laughs> great at what? That's interesting. Thank you, man. Appreciate the diamond. Is it is he being sarcastic? Kneeling kneeling is for the weak. Get off your knees, boy, says Stu ne Stu Tay. Oh. <laughs> da Okie Doke says, freaking autocorrect woman. I think he meant John Lewis was a great woman. <laughs> Not even that, but uh, Ben. Oberste says, just became a patron to JLP. Hope it helps. Yeah, right on. Appreciate that. I do encourage it. He has some great content on the Patreon or, or Subscribestar. More, speech, more free speech friendly than Patreon, I hear. So that's cool. Um, Mr. Petty said, diamonds on the floor. <laughs> Mr. Petty, more diamonds. Appreciate that. And I got your email. Thank you, man. The Reverend Chad Kroger. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but thank you. Gave a diamond and said, hey, Hake, why does everybody hate such and such, so and so? I don't know. I'll have to look up that name. I'll copy and, uh, and Google it, and then maybe I'll be able to tell you. But appreciate the diamond. Mr. Petty gave another diamond, and Patrice O'Neill Groiper said, great at being dead. <laughs> Heartless. I don't know. I think I disavow that. <laughs> but
But thank you, Patrice O'Neill Graper. You're interesting, man. Right on. Marty from Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you for holding. You've been on hold some time now. And by the oh, way, man. by the way, yeah. Marty, before I get started with you, they have this guy who's wearing this these like African patterns on a robe, and he's wearing this pink tie as well, and he's officiating this funeral, I guess. And he looks just like this guy who's in this degenerate TV show, the one black character in it, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. And he's a, but this guy's a reverend, and the guy from Curb Your Enthusiasm is definitely not a reverend, but actually they're both sinners. <laughs> that guy, that guy from, that guy from, uh, um, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, wasn't that Charlie Murphy? He's dead. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, he died. Is that Eddie Murphy's older brother or younger brother or something? Yeah, that's his brother. He's the, he's, he's the one that... When did um, he die? Was it pretty recently? Like in the last no. year or two? No, it was longer ago than that. Oh. Because I feel yeah, like he, there's still episodes coming out from like 2018, but I could be totally mistaken on the timeline. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if that show still exists. I don't have cable anymore, but I right know on. that... I, I know that um, Charlie Murphy was on... I believe he was on that show. He um and 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 he died. And, I heard that he was, was in Black Jesus, which is another yeah interesting TV show. He was. He was. A, he was. A, he was a funny guy, and he did. Um, he also did. Um, did you ever see um, on the Dave Chappelle show uh, the um, Rick James episodes? Um, I'm. I've seen a few of the Dave. Sh- a lot of the Dave Chappelle episodes, but. I wasn't conscious of, it's been so long, it's been like f- more than 16 years since I've seen any Dave Chappelle. Yeah, he, he, they, they had a, they had a Rick James, a Rick James skit that they would do, and Charlie Murphy, and it was first-hand information from Charlie Murphy, and he would, um, talk about, uh, his experience with Rick James and how he idolized him, and Rick, and and he was severely disappointed because Rick James just abused the heck out of him. I mean, he he like met him at a party, and Rick James just punches him right in the face. I mean, he just like wow. and, and 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 Charlie Murphy was a big guy. He was a, he was like a bouncer man. He was big. So the but guy Rick, in the guy in Curb Your Enthusiasm, and some of you guys may be completely lost as to what we're talking about, but it's a totally degenerate TV show put on by this guy who. Also put out the slightly less degenerate um, Seinfeld. <laughs> I yeah, say slightly. Yeah, but, um, yeah, no, this uh, is J.B. Smooth, this black guy in uh, the Curb Your Enthusiasm. J.B. Okay. Smooth. Okay, it's a different guy then. He's still alive, I think. For some reason, I thought it was Charlie Murphy, but I, I guess I'm mistaken about that. But I, was, I was wondering if you've heard any, um, any inside information on um, Trevor Wesley, because... He used to have that show, Bros and Cons, uh-huh. and I haven't and I haven't seen it in like two weeks. Oh, and yeah, I I wasn't aware of anything changing, so no, I don't have any in, inside Joelle? info. Joelle's not here in here right now, so sorry. Oh, okay, cannot help you, but um, I don't know. Check the Instagram or whatever. No, nah, man, I I don't I don't even I'm not even on Instagram, but. Yeah. I sent I sent Nick a um I sent Nick a video that um I don't know if you've seen it he didn't know if you'd seen it but um a video of a of the of the uh, hockey coach when he's telling the team don't disrespect the flag when you go out there on the ice have you seen that video no oh, but it's good. but hockey is more of a white sport so I don't think I'm really surprised yeah he said he said he goes I'm going to tell you right now. Because I guess there were it was Amer- an American team getting ready to play Canadians, and he said, "I'm going to tell you right now, if any of you guys have plans to disrespect the American flag or the Canadian flag, you can pack your and he uses expletives. Yeah. You can pack it up right now because you're and, and get the f out because you're not you're not going to see a, m- a minute of ice time." <laughs> yeah, it's like. That is freaking hilarious, man. Just that's coaching. how that's how co- that's how you're kind of used to coaches being. So it's kind of a shame that that's not the norm, honestly. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you're right. Because now they're just a bunch of kiss-ups. It's a disgrace. Yeah, you you um 
I'm surprised that uh, that you're actually on YouTube because. Um, well, don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Because I, I, I was I was looking so hard for uh, Jesse this morning, I couldn't find him, and then He's, I found him on. Yeah, the Jesse Lee site. Peterson is suspended on streaming on YouTube. His Jesse Lee Peterson channel. The other ones are okay. He got this bogus copyright strike. I think it's political. Uh, I think it's, I suspect, but I can't prove because, you know, there's no way to prove that it's uh, political targeting or maybe it's just anti-Christian targeting, honestly. But right. they took down his one stream for supposed, in the, towards the end of the stream, while it was still going, for a violation, a supposed violation of their um, community guidelines. And then the next day, they issued a strike for a video that came out three weeks prior, supposedly issued by a takedown, a takedown notice from Sony Music Entertainment Japan Incorporated. But, you know, I, and they have no info as to what this, the supposed content we used was. Nick poured over it with a fine toothed comb, metaphorically speaking. And our, uh, another intern guy of mine, Will, who, by the way, Will says, bros and cons isn't happening right now. Too busy. So FYI, that's what's going on with bros and cons. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what that's what uh, Richie uh, Ruxpin, his sidekick, said. All right. He told me. Yeah, that's the really inside do. info. I don't know what you need from me then. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Marty, good to hear from you. Appreciate okay, you. Yeah, it was it was it was it was good talk to you, man. Appreciate right. it. Take care. Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, I have no update on this person that you uh, tipped me off to. The Rev Chad Kroger, but if you want to send me a tip, send me a tip with more info. Stop using Google. Hate they're evil. DuckDuckGo.com says calm in the chaos. Yeah, when I want to find something that I'm pretty sure is suppressed, maybe I'll have to DuckDuckGo this person that uh, I was tipped off on. Um, Patrice O'Neill Groiper gave a dive and said, I'm interesting. Do you love Groipers, Hake? Yes, you're interesting, and I love no one, Groiper. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's interesting to be a, I don't know, he's just a very interesting person. Joe Maddock gave a ninja guinea and said, Where are the, what are the Hake Report thoughts on Chick-fil-A patronizing LGBT and BLM? Do you still eat there? I never honestly really ate there. I couldn't really get into it. I've, I ate there more right after the Dan Cathy guy. You know, I went a few times after hearing about it because they had, the Dan Cathy guy said, guilty as charged when back in 2012 or whenever it was, he said that he's against so-called same-sex marriage. It's wrong. But um, I remember even at that point, they said, oh, we're going to stay out of politics, which is fine, I guess. But that's basically, in my opinion, kind of caving. And um, since that time, I can probably count, I can definitely count on one hand, probably count on two or three fingers the number of times that I've eaten Chick-fil-A. I'm talking about since 2012. So, yeah, I never really ate there. But it is a shame. It's ridiculous to see, I think Dan Cathy again, was the guy who was washing the feet of, who was that, Lecrae, the black rapper? <laughs> what a disgrace. No wonder we need White History Month. Because whites are going to be history. If uh, we go the way of Chick-fil-A, that's the wrong way to go. More like Sick-fil-A. <laughs> uh, and Americans aren't making babies, by the way. It's a drudge headline. Stop using Drudge. Use Revolver.News. <laughs> I know. Old habits die hard. I'm an old dog. <laughs> but it's true. And I've noticed that, too. They cl I heard that even blacks are a declining population. In terms of maybe they're still getting black refugees. But in terms of replacement rate, they're not having enough babies on average, I hear. Even the ones who are having, you know, you hear about these guys that make 40-something kids. 
I may be confusing that with John McAfee, but some black guys do it too, right? With different mothers. And even with that, it's not enough to keep up the, uh, the uh, average. According to Bloomberg Business Week, pandas and white rhinos aren't the only creatures that are unsuccessful at mating in captivity. And I guess they're talking about with this COVID thing, we're all captive. And, you know, there's this discouragement. Oh, don't get, don't get pregnant during a pandemic because then you'll have to go to the doctor. Not necessarily. And in fact, I know of people who've um, made babies during the pandemic, and I think that they'll be just fine, especially if they're, like, young and healthy. Um, but I have noticed that the people who come here, they get educated, they just have, like, one or two kids, if even that. Or they just have dogs. A few of my friends have made ch- have ch- had children, but for the most part, either they didn't get they haven't gotten married, or they finally got married after living together for a while, and then some of them have made a f- couple of kids or w- whatever. Some of them still haven't had any kids, and these are Hispanics and Asians. And I don't I don't even know it many whites or blacks, right? In terms of childhood friends, right? Sick. Sick. So, um, (laughs) I'm so happy with President Trump in the last uh, few minutes of this hour. Trump is shaming Fox News. And, you know, I like Fox News. I appreciate them. Kind of like how I appreciate YouTube. For spreading the truth early on. Even to this day a little bit. Spreading a little bit of truth. But um, he says they forgot who got them where they are. And it's shared by, it's an article shared by the the slimy New York Daily News. I call the New York Daily News slimy. Slimy? As in disgusting? Because think about who they employ. There's this very prominent Black Lives Matter supporter, agitator, awful person, named uh, Sean King, S-H-A-U-N, I think is how you spell his name, King. He claims to be black. A lot of people claim that he's not. I don't know or really care, but his heart is evil. He's just an evil person. By the way, he blocked Jesse Lee Peterson on Twitter a long time ago, I think it was. But Sean King is employed for the past few years, I would say. Even, I mean, since the Black Lives Matter came in, came out as a, the most prominent hate and, ex, and widely accepted hate group in America, widely uh, embraced by the hateful mainstream media, hate-filled mainstream media, America-hating, white-hating, honestly, black-hating mainstream media, they employ that guy. And he does hit, constant hit pieces on cops, on... Uh, he's prominent on Twitter. Twitter, which supports the hate group, the terror group, Black Lives Matter. And they're evil. Uh, so, New York Daily News, slime. They say, it's so cute when they argue. Dumb. Referring to President Trump lashing out against Fox News. That was yesterday. Accusing the so-called right-wing cable channel. (laughs) It's not right-wing. It's pretty, I would say it's pretty, uh... L- pretty left wing if you consider the fact that they support homosexuality and this feminism stuff a bit much for anybody's taste. Pretty far left, honestly. Yeah, they're not necessarily pro abortion like crazy, although they do employ some nutty people. Donna Brazil, does Donna Brazil pr- support abortion? She's certainly a prominent Democrat. She was the leading uh, DNC chair or acting chair at one point. When she passed, she passed notes, cheat notes to Hillary Clinton, and then Fox News hired her. But uh, Trump called Fox News ungrateful and unwatchable. I don't know if those are the exact words, but he, he tweeted out this. I was on Air Force One flying to the great state of Texas, where I just landed. This was yesterday, he tweeted, in the morning. 
It is amazing in watching Fox News how different they are from four years ago. Just four years, wow. Not even watchable. They totally forgot who got them where they are, he said. He, also, he always watches Fox and Friends. There's a couple of decent guys on there. Kilmeade's a nice guy. Uh, that skinny older guy who's the father of a once skinny younger guy. <laughs> guy's gaining weight. Um, Stephen, I forget what his last name is. But a nice guy. Supports Trump, I think. And, you know, everybody loves Tucker. How can you not love Tucker? Except for the slimy media that hates Tucker, right? <laughs> Uh, Joe Maddox says, Sean King is full white. He's a deceiver. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's not very white to be a deceiver. <laughs> I disavow that type of white guy that would do that. But maybe it is, honestly, because whites are losing, and you can't be a truth teller if you're losing. If you're losing. Um, I'm going to read more from that. Da- Okie doke. Appreciate that. But... Trump uh, talking about Fox News, and he's telling kind of the truth. They've been, they've become kind of kiss-ups. And I, I appreciate them for what the good stuff that they've done over the years. They even had Matt Drudge hosting a show, as I told you before. They would bring Jesse Lee Peterson on. A lot of boomers heard of Jesse Lee Peterson by watching Fox News. That's cool. A lot of you guys... As much as YouTube is evil, and they are, and Google is evil, and they are, have learned about Jesse Lee Peterson from YouTube. So you gotta, um, though they meant it for evil, God meant it for good, right? You never know. (laughs) So right on to President Trump. The Justice Department is, here's another good stance from Trump. The Justice Department the, De- the Department of Justice, DOJ, sending more federal agents and investigators to Cleveland, Detroit, and Milwaukee. Cleveland, Ohio. Heavy, um, heavy uh, crime area. Detroit, Michigan, crime area. And Milwaukee, Wisconsin, crime area. And those are heavy black areas and probably have, have a lot of BLM and Antifa agitators causing crimes, and honestly, attacks on cops, regular criminals, too. Probably more out of control with the attack on cops. It's the, you could call it the Ferguson effect. The Ferguson effect after the six years ago Ferguson situation. As part of an initiative aimed at helping local and state authorities tackle a spike in violent crimes. A spike in violent crimes. Past administrations have done the same thing. This is, this is from CNN, by the way. But it, and it typically is not controversial. But given Trump, the Trump administration's stance on current nationwide unrest and the president's renewed law and order persona, local and state leaders have been pushing back on his deployment of federal efforts. Yeah, these sick people like the, the Chicago mayor, the black... Lesbian radical Lori Lightfoot, the Portland mayor whose city is out of control for two months and running, Ted Wheeler. Poor man. Can somebody research Ted Wheeler? Is he like, is, I mean, he is a Democrat. That's basically all you need to know. Ted Wheeler is not black, he's white. So you would think that, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say you would think that he would be more competent, but no. Whites have become kiss-ups, especially the Democrats, but also the rhinos. Such a shame. The administration just reached an agreement with Oregon, and I don't even know if he's like a normal white Christian guy. I don't think so. I don't see how you can be. The administration reached an agreement with Oregon, which is run by a liberal female governor to withdraw federal officers from parts of Portland after they were sent there earlier this month to protect federal assets including a courthouse I think see he doesn't he doesn't look like a I don't know maybe he's Canadian (laughs) just playing around that's probably an insult to the Canadians 
um, prolonged protests for so-called racial justice and police accountability. Yeah, right. Portland Mayor Wheeler and his family, money. They have money from timber industry. Interesting, Jomatic. Thank you for the tip. If true, check it out. Dr. Emmanuel. <laughs> I gotta talk about this story. I'm gonna talk about this in the next hour. Dr. Emmanuel. And you know what? I don't know if I'll take a break. I might. Stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Emmanuel is this black lady who is, I think she was born in Bali, Cameroon, C-A-M-E-R-O-O-N, which is, I believe is an African country. I don't know my geography. I can't really blame it on Southern California education because it was me who was not paying attention. But um, Dr. Emmanuel, according to Big Mama Jazz, Mamajas. Um, Dr. Emmanuel attacked and censored for hydroxy. Hydroxy. Because she promoted hydroxychloroquine. But I took a look at this lady. And you know, I don't think this is the lady that you would want to promote as somebody that you would trust with regard to whether or not to take this hydroxychloroquine. She pretends to be a Christian minister. I don't believe her. I don't trust her. Never listen to the woman. <laughs> this is one lady I don't think you should necessarily listen to. She is a licensed pediatrician. That's nice. I'm sure she's competent in some ways, but I think that I really think that this lady is off the deep end in other ways. This is a screenshot of a of a um video that she put out. It went semi-viral. It has hundreds of thousands of views. Firepower Ministries. She founded this thing called Firepower Ministries. And is it me or is she preaching? That's not right. Some Christian. But, you know, I feel, look, these doctors and her, I don't know why, I think they should have pulled her off. I mean, I know that there's freedom of speech in this country, but if you're trying to promote hydroxychloroquine as a valid thing, you wouldn't want this, I honestly think you wouldn't want this lady to be the one pushing it, but maybe it's because she's black, they gave her a pass and she's foreign sounding. I think she is, probably has this African accent. <sighs> Physician, author, speaker, entrepreneur, deliverance minister, is that what that says? God's battle, what does that say? Can you help me? <laughs> God's battle axe and weapon of war. <laughs> and you know, that, that's how weak men are, that she thinks that of herself. Um, Rehoboth Medical Center, Houston, Texas, Firepower Ministries. And by the way, I tried to go to that website. It's defunct right now. Um, out of Houston, Texas. This lady is, I think, I read a little bit about her on Hake News, I believe. I think she's a nutcase, man. Not a good person to be promoting. You know, of, of course you should not go along with the liberals. The liberal media, like the far-left anti-American Daily Beast, did a hit piece on her. Trump retweeted her. You know, maybe Trump wasn't really aware of her background. He didn't look into her, right? He just saw the tweet. She was promoting hydroxychloroquine. She recommended it. This is, was a viral tweet, and a lot of people were getting censored for it, right? But uh, I saw this Drudge headline. Trump's Twitter doc says Jesus will destroy Facebook if, he, if it doesn't put her video back up. So she is from Cameroon, studied in Nigeria, practiced in Texas and Louisiana, and she's a nutcase, I say. Turning Point USA put out her video. <laughs> but, uh... Okay, so listen to what Trump, Donald J. Trump tweeted according to The Sun. The Sun is a far-left outlet, foreign outlet, based in UK. Total betrayers of what's right in favor of what's evil. They just hate their own country and the West. But Joseph J. Flynn tweeted, 
She's a fearless warrior for the truth, debunking the left-wing narrative on hydroxychloroquine. That is why they want to attack her so fiercely. Keep up the good fight, Dr. Stella. And Stella Emanuel, PhD, tweeted out this, this uh, video, which has a Turning Point USA watermark on it, which is supposed to be a conservative, mainstream, con- so-called conservative outlet. And she says, COVID has a cure. America, wake up. <laughs> Trump t- retweeted it, whatever. You know, she seemed impressive. But um, she's kind of exposing herself as kind of a little bit of a nutcase. I don't agree with censoring her. But uh, I, don't, I also don't agree with putting her in the forefront. And I think, I think that this was de facto, you know, this white guilt putting a black woman up in front. Because then, it, then it's not, oh, we're tired of listening to white man. Uh, nanny. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> that was a drop... I will get to your calls. Hang tight, guys. We are in the second hour. I don't need a break. I am tough. If uh, the Ralph Retort can go three hours, no break, I can do it two hours, no break. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but she touted hydroxychloroquine as a cure. And maybe it sounds like for some people it does work. But her name is Stella Emanuel. She blasted Facebook and Twitter after they removed the so-called controversial video. I think, by the way, my going theory on this, I have no idea. I don't know about medicine. But my theory is that this is only controversial because Trump has pushed it. This hydroxychloroquine. Uh, Trump has been promoting it. And everything Trump promotes, that even if it is true, they try to go the other way, to their detriment, really. The liberal media. And then there have been articles even put out by CNN that say it does work for some. Uh, but they're not censored by Twitter or Facebook. Don Jr. even got, uh, suspended. Is he back yet on Twitter? So it's ridiculous. These so-called platforms doing editorial, acting like they're It's their job to be so-called fact-checkers. They're not about truth. They support Black Lives Matter, which has nothing to do with the truth. Very destructive to the country, by the way, that Black Lives Matter lie. So in a tweet Monday night, she wrote, Hello, Facebook. Put Put back my profile page and videos up on your computers, or your computers will start crashing until you do. You are not bigger than God. (laughs) I promise you, if my page is not back up, Facebook will be down in Jesus' name. (laughs) What is that? Just wishful thinking? How does she know? Shut up! Yeah, that's what I say. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, don't get too excited about some of these people. I think that whites have a tendency to get overexcited if she's like African, right? At root, African. And if she's saying anything that resembles Christianity, she started this firepower ministries. People just get excited about that stuff, when in reality, like, it's not real. (laughs) Have some, be incredulous, right? So that was a white coat summit in front of the Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. She was standing with a group of doctors. The rest of them were white, mostly men. I think I saw a female in the picture that Joelle put up, praising hydroxychloroquine, long touted by Donald Trump, President Trump, as potentially combating the... Chinese virus, they call it the novel coronavirus, which is the preferred term of the Chinese Communist Party. Um, They should have pulled her from the crowd, because it's not, I mean, pulled her away from the mic. She has a long history of making bold claims, according to the Daily Beast, and the Daily Beast has a long history of lying, too. Of course, we know that. Um, By the way, Madonna (laughs) retweeted, shared her video on Instagram, this kind of, this kind of feeds my narrative about the whites kissing up, because Madonna has, she has, like, adoptive African children, right? Doesn't she have, like, four children, um, that she, you know, they were born in, like, unfortunate circumstances or whatever, and she adopted them. Uh, she, I remember she was being a nutcase early on in this COVID shutdown, too. Talking about, I want to drink, but drinking 
hurts your immune system. She's like 60 now, and still a very bad example for ladies, let's say that. <laughs> I don't want to say the S-L-U-T word, but she does act like a slut. These are the children. And no father that I know of, right? Is she? I think she was kind of married to Guy Ritchie for a little while, but like they need their father if they can. One of these guys, he was an older guy or thirty something, had a had a child with a teenager in Africa. I think he went into hiding or something, and he's kind of come out not liking how she's raising the kids. I might be getting some of these stories confused, but you know these do-gooders, so-called are not doing good. But she put out this stuff on Instagram. She shared the video of Emmanuel's hydroxychloroquine claims. Ah, Oh my gosh, she looks like Mother Teresa. <laughs> Except with Botox in her lips. That's her boyfriend? Oh man. <laughs> I forgot about this type of stuff. He's a, he's a he dances for her. He's a dancer. He's well you, known. Do you know him? I, I know of him. Okay. I've definitely seen him around. Okay. Because <laughs> I feel like we've come across guys that you danced with or you knew or stuff like that. <laughs> Man. He's, def he's definitely a dancer. Her dancer, actually. <laughs> Man. Uh, uh, he her dancer, all right. That's awful. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I was reading a little bit about... Um, this guy who's a famous actor who was referenced by Jesse Lee Peterson in the Sunday service, uh, Jack Nicholson. And his life growing up, man, like, it was a... I think his mother was a dancer or something like that. But, I don't know, he's had an interesting life. Um, he is 84 right now. Did you know that? Something like that. Maybe older than that. Wow. His first movie was 1958. It was a teen drama. He was the star. Wow. Anyways, um, according to this Daily Beast article, let me just read to you. I don't... I to completely disavow the Daily Beast. I, I, I was going to say I hate them. And that is the truth. <laughs> but I don't endorse hate either. <laughs> but whatever. Published Tuesday. Um, Emmanuel's previous claims have been... Inclu have included stating medical issues like endometria end endometriosis, cysts, and infertility and impotence are caused by sex with spirit husbands and spirit wives. Another Emmanuel claim, according to the Daily Beast, is that an Illuminati plan had been concocted by a witch to destroy the world using abortion, gay marriage, and children's toys. I mean, maybe, she <laughs> maybe in a sense she's not entirely wrong. Because some of those things are really evil. Um, President Donald Trump also retweeted that video in question. He abruptly ended his press briefing on Tuesday when asked about the footage. He said, I don't know which country she comes from, but she said that she's had tremendous success with hundreds of different patients, which I tend to doubt. But, you know, I think that she is an exaggerator. I don't think she's really about the truth. And, but he said, and I thought her voice was an important voice, but I know nothing about her, Trump said. And he does that. That's cool. I mean, I, I like that he retweets people whose um, statements he finds interesting or compelling. Um, when asked a, a follow-up question about the doctor opposing masks, because she, she said, you don't need masks. Uh, Trump advocated for that last week. He walked off the podium only to say on Wednesday that he was very impressed by this Dr. Emanuel woman. Maybe she speaks kind of well. <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I got to get back to some calls. We are at 10:12 a.m. here in Los Angeles. You cannot support me on YouTube. You can support me on streamlabs.com slash the hate report or dlive.tv slash the hate report. And thank you to the guys and gals who are supporting on my Patreon. I do have a Patreon. I think I even have a subscribe star if you prefer that. I don't have any exclusive content for you. It's just a much appreciated monthly support automatic donation thing. So uh, thank you very much. Anyways, I got to get to Samuel in Sweden. Samuel, it's nice to hear from you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I said yesterday in the chat that I would call today, so I thought I'd do it. 
And um, I actually tried to call Jesse Lee Peterson earlier, but uh, lots of phone problems. So okay. I didn't. But uh, I I wanted to say one thing, and I don't know if that's off topic uh, from your show, but about uh, the defunding cops uh, talk, you know, everywhere they. That's to. yeah. That's definitely on. It's on. It's in with the attack on cops, the attack on America. The attack on blacks, yeah. the attack on whites. Blacks are going to suffer the most from that, by the way. The but more the cops, was- more cops, less death. It's just a fact. I- including, I mean, especially for the criminals who are getting arrested. If there's, if there are more cops on the street, and they have more training to, but more cops on the street, they are more confident, the people, the suspect realizes he has no chance, <laughs> less likely to run, hopefully. And just in general, fewer deaths when there's more cops around. Anyways, yeah. What uh, what I thought about was that uh, some year, uh, some days ago I realized that the cops uh, they um, they are some way responsible for what's happening because they have defended the politicians and the laws that now is coming and getting them. I realized that you know they have back and let evil evil politicians evil uh, things happen in society and protect that evil and but you know I saw, saw a great news and I think you mentioned it it was a uh, hundred police organizations in uh, that would not protect the DNC uh, later oh yeah. I didn't I, I had not seen that so they're not going to well, support mean, the they're not going to protect yeah. the Democrat National Committee I mean, yeah, honestly, I don't, I don't blame them. I mean, I would, I would hope that they would take a stand like that because the Democrats are very much anti-police. Yeah, no, they, they, it say, they said it was because the Democrats had removed their, uh, the use of uh, tear gas and other non-lethal weapons against uh, the terrorists I, or demonstrators, whatever you want to call them. But, you know, I thought because... They have to realize something, their police, that if they defend evil politicians, uh, they're going to get hurt in the end, like we're seeing now. And I want to make a quite drastic uh, likeness, and that's the Nazis. And the soldiers thought that they used to follow order, but in the end they had to stand trial and some were executed because of following order. So right. I mean, it's the police see that they, I mean, all this child kidnapping thing, you know, police always defending the child, uh, so-called child protective service. That's happening. They, they Interesting. attack men and defend evil women. I don't say, I don't say that they know that, uh, that they know that the, the women are evil, but I mean that they have defended a, a, a system that's now attacking men, attacking yeah. pow, uh, good power. Right, I know. There's there's a lot of guys, um, pretty fair-minded guys who are are kind of glad that this is happening and hoping this is a wake-up call for the police, who have been very politically correct, and you know most of them are employees. They don't have a say in what the policy department policy is, but it's. We really need a, a change in a, a push for a change in the culture, for sure. And you know, it's so it's so funny because the Democrats are for basically not only are they killing for killing the babies in the womb, and especially black babies, they're also for for death in the streets. I mean, they're running these. Not only are they running these ghettos, they're also attacking the police, which is going to lead to more deaths. Uh, by of blacks and others, and they're also promoting the hatred against whites, which is a. It reminds me of South Africa. You know how South Africa, the whites are targeted and hated for no reason, and they're getting killed, and their land is getting taken away from them, and the mainstream media is denying it. Even here in this country, who they should know better, they're denying it. They're saying, oh, well, most of the people dying are blacks. Or, I don't know what they're saying. And it is true that most of the people dying are blacks. It's a majority black country currently. And black-on-black crime is way out of control over there. 
but it's also black on white crime that is out of control over there. And it's vicious stuff what they're doing to the farmers, innocent people, defenseless people. It's very evil. Anyways, I, I appreciate it, Samuel. I, I do hope that um, more police wake up, but we need all people to wake up for sure. Yeah, I actually had one more thing, but perhaps you had to go on a video show. Yeah. Okay. Well, take care, Samuel. Yeah, okay. All right. Take care and have a good day. All right. We'll Bye. be in touch. Send me an email, by the way. Uh, of what? Of what? Sunday. About Sunday. If you're still okay. trying to do anything on Sunday. Maybe not this Sunday, yeah, actually. You know, you Maybe can, not this Sunday. Yeah. But um, anyway, can, we'll be in touch. You, you can see my live stream right now and push the bell button to be notified when I go live. Okay. You know, no Appreciate problem. that, man. Take care. Oh, man. Um, let's see what Bible Go To Guy says. Referring to this lady. This lady that I just, just mercilessly criticized. <laughs> Because I haven't even watched that video, by the way. I have not watched this video of this female doctor. I just read about her, and I read that she's a minister. I'm like, uh-uh. And I heard that she said, oh, Jesus is going to disable your server's Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, seems like a nutcase. Anyways, he says, she did not come across to me as being too fired up and emotional. But if she has, in fact, had over 350 patients, not one of them has died even with pre-existing conditions, then let her speak. Trump called Ted Cruz a liar. They're back together again. And the black surgeon who wanted to take a hammer to his mother works for Trump, referring to um, Dr. Ben Carson. I have information about HUD, by the way, and President Trump and what they're doing. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. They're attacking Trump for... Ending the redistribution of ghettos. It's so beautiful. Right on. The police are not necessarily taking a stand, but the Democrats have put so much restriction, this is from Bible Go To Guy, on the police who would provide protection that no sane police department will put their officers in such danger. Yeah, I mean, they're banning people from using chokeholds. Of course, you need a chokehold to uh, subdue people. It's a very useful thing. And when you do a chokehold, you don't. You don't set the person to choking necessarily. It's just called a choke hold because it goes around. It's like a choke chain. When you have a choke chain on a dog, <laughs> you're able to keep them at bay. You don't necessarily choke them. I don't know. Anyways, let me quickly get to Ryan in Tampa, Florida. Ryan, first time caller. What's up? How are you doing? Hey, hey, uh, Brian. Actually, with B. Brian oh, okay, here Brian. From Tampa. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Nice to hear from good, you. Good. It's nice to meet you. It's actually a first time calling. I've been a big JLP fan for many years and um, figured I'd call into your show. Uh, I know we're talking about a lot of different things, um, but one of the things I, that's come out, the two big pieces of information that come out on the mainstream, one um, is uh, Fauci uh, coming out now and talking about wearing goggles. <laughs> right. I've heard that yet. I, I have mean, heard that, and you know what? I. You know, I halfway believe him as a, um, you know, somebody who's, if somebody's vulnerable, I kind of, kind of makes sense. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, well, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know that goggles, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I just, can you imagine just seeing a bunch of people wearing goggles? I mean, it's never happened in the history of uh, history. I know, that's you know? true. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I mean, and that's just, I'm kind of a common sense guy, you yeah, know, so it's like, good point. I, I don't know, it seems kind of silly, but, um, you know, the other thing that I that I was thinking, what I wanted to talk about was, I don't know if you saw the report on the GDP numbers, and I heard uh, that saying it's taken a hit, three percent, a thirty-three percent loss, right, of GDP. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, and, and what that is, that's they, honestly they comparing it to. Go, go ahead, for I'm it. Sorry. Go for it. No, they were comparing it to uh, World War II, right? Because that was one of the biggest economic hits that we ever took because the war was so expensive. Yeah. Now, the G the GDP in one quarter during World War II took a 10% hit, and that was the biggest hit ever in a quarter. Wow. Okay? It just went to 33%. So we're talking about one quarter being three times as much as World War II. So this yeah. is unprecedented times, right? Yep. And, you know, After I just, these shutdowns I just wanted to you know, hear what you had to think about that. I think that's you know, the, it, my theory is, without knowing, that the Democrats 
want slash don't mind killing businesses. They want businesses dead so that they can swoop in and pretend to be the hero and, you know, attack Trump for it. I was thinking about how they like, you know, how the media likes wars and going to war and taking some, doing some type of decisive action and, and promoting it as a good thing. And then yeah. once a Republican is in a war, then they criticize, it's taking too long, too many Americans are dying. Or if a Democrat's in the war, they can ignore it. And then they do these emotional things all these time, all the time. But same yeah. thing with these businesses. This is an attack on the country. It's an attack on our freedoms. It's an attack on our common sense. I was reading an article. No, I think it was a CNN email yesterday from like the daily updates, right? I get their daily updates. And they said something to the effect of, unfortunately, this is going to be... Um, it's going to require personal responsibility. They think it's unfortunate that COVID, self-protecting your own health and that of others, being responsible, um, is going to be a matter of personal responsibility. I'm like... That's, a, that's, 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 that's like profanity. It's yeah. Like, I, I was actually... I don't know if you saw that... Uh, was it the Smithsonian Institute of African American Studies? And they were saying that... Personal responsibility was a white was a, was a white uh, value. Yeah, it's so these people are so evil. They promote yeah. a lack of responsibility, and then yeah. and then they only yeah. hold the cops and the whites and the men to this fake yeah. standard. It's hey, listen, so really Mr. Hayes, ridiculous. Great, great talking with you. I know you got a, you a, well. a full a full lineup. I appreciate your time. We'll call back in sometime. All right, Brian. Take care, man. Let me quickly get to Travis who wants to talk about this Dr. Stella Emanuel and her research out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been to Charlotte, beautiful area. I think I, I took walks over in Charlotte, I think. Travis, thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Great, great. Yeah, man, love the show. Um, I just wanted to say, like, um, I know you, you just answered my question uh, that you didn't watch the video, correct? That's right. I did not watch it. Yeah, so I, I mean, it came across like I, I agree with the Bible go to guy. He he basically said it. it. It looked genuine. I mean, of course, she seemed like she had a little bit more emotion, but I kind of understand it. Right. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that, like, if you haven't really watched it, uh, don't kind of you know don't bash her just so soon. Okay, I'll check because, it out. But yeah, I just she, I know that I know that these. I know that these, like, more African-style women, or any black woman or any woman who's, like, a preacher right. and out in the forefront like that, I just feel that that's, like, ego involved, you know? She's, she's, yeah. not, she's about herself, and she thinks it's about God and this stuff. So that's yeah, but my I didn't get that vibe when yeah, I didn't All get right. that vibe when I watched it. I mean, I, that's why I want you to kind of watch it. If you can sure. find it, they're taking it down. I know, huh? <laughs> Is it on BitChute but, anywhere? Somebody sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, it's, crazy. it's somewhere. I know the last time um, place I thought it was there, they actually, you know, deleted it. But it, it it's is. Almost it like, is very interesting that they're being that they're cracking down that hard on it. I think yeah, it's all because of hatred of Trump that they're doing that. Because Trump yeah. one retweeted it, and two, he's been promoting this hydroxychloroquine for a long time, yeah, and they hate and him. And I think, I think, I mean, being I'm a military veteran there's a lot of things that aren't being said in the government yeah so i mean I, I i don't you know disagree that trump knows more than what we know and he can't say anything but the the fact that just like they do with jesse lee peterson i mean you know he says some things that's not popular yeah and, and you may not even fan. yeah you may not even see it right away what he what he says it may sound kind right. of crazy to you but then yeah. you look into it and it is true so yeah, yeah you may they, you may be right I may yeah, be just and, and too then, uncharitable with this lady. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I always told my friends, I said, um, before the Trump uh, era or whatever, I mean, I voted for Obama once. I don't even want to admit that. But uh, yeah. I, I, um, when when Trump became in office, I said either two things are going to happen because he's not politically correct. He's, I mean, he's he don't know how. I mean, you can tell if he's, like, BSing around. He puts his foot in his mouth. And, you know, he just says off the wall, off the cuff things, but either two things will happen. It's like 
either they're going to say he's stupid and he don't know what he's talking about or something mysteriously is going to happen to him, if you know what I mean. Um, something bad. And yeah. it was the pretty much the first one. Like, now they're making him seem like he is just so idiotic. And, I mean, just he's an idiot. And you know, man, he's not, they, so. they attack him. They Think about the times that they've attacked him. He's been right every time. <laughs> He said, mm -hmm. he said, um, Mexico, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Exactly. Turned out, yeah. turned out he was right, and some of us already mm -hmm. knew he was right. He stood on that, yeah. they attacked him. They, to this day, they try to call that a lie. It's the truth. Um, yeah. The uh, Obama wires tapped Trump Tower, and he put it in quotes, he tweeted that out. Insane, and all that stuff. He tweeted that out, mm -hmm. turned out to be true. So every time yeah. he's, he's stood on something, uh, Charlottesville, very fine people on both sides and violence on many sides. They didn't like him telling the truth about that. All of a sudden, they don't have any nuance with regard to criticisms of the alt-right, um, who are not even half as evil, for the most part, as the uh, Antifa or Black Lives Matter. Um, right. Right. And he's, he, he was right. So he's, mm -hmm. they're attacking him hard on this hydroxychloroquine thing. <laughs> I do have a feeling that he may come out to be, you know, right. But I don't right. know. It's interesting. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it, Travis. Thank you for the yeah, input. no problem. All right. All right, take yeah, care. Everyone, hey. You as well. Um, I'm going to get to more of your calls, but I got to show this to you guys. Um, let me just double check the Super Chats. Thank you guys for the subscriptions, the follows, the lemons, the diamonds. Let me actually read the top contributors, because I just... I sometimes forget and I don't like to do it at the very end. Um, thank you to Agent Black and Jib Jab and all you guys who support on the streamlabs.com slash the hate report. Joe Maddock, very supportive. Thank you, man. Da Okie Doke. <laughs> Reminds me of Okie Dog or Okie's Dog. Very good place, but the okie doke, thank you. Patrice O'Neill Groiper, thank you, man. Um, yeah, I like the Groipers. I don't know if I love anybody, but... <laughs> Mr. Petty, very supportive. Fabrietz, thank you. Stu Tay, the Reverend Chad Kroger, Big Mamajas, and Big Mamajas said something funny, but I already forgot what it was. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. I, oh, yeah, he was making fun of me because I was, like, okay with the goggles. He's like, come on, gog dude, goggles, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know if he said dude. That's my whiteness in me. Hydro PX, thank you. And Calm in the Chaos, appreciate that. And beautiful stickers from Sean Breed, Iconoclast, and the rest of you guys. Um, with General Lee Pepe in front of the beautiful Confederate flag. Confederate battle flag. Um, there's a big attack on the South, and it is an attack on all white people. It's an attack on the blacks. It's, called, it's pushing them to scapegoat, falsely scapegoat where their hatred comes from, and anger and misery. It's such a shame. Um, but let me just tell you guys, I'm really happy to tell you guys that President Trump Thank God for Trump. Trump tells voters in suburbs. Why does he say? Why does it say voters in suburbs? That's a, okay. So this is a Twitter. You know how Twitter publishes so-called news now? They curate it for you. This is their headline. Twitter. I mean, Twitter says. Trump tells voters in suburbs they will no longer be bothered by low-income housing. And no longer be bothered is a quote. So real Donald Trump tweeted, and he is real, guys. He's, he tweeted, I think I have these tweets for you. Trump housing, yes, that is the folder. <laughs> real Donald Trump tweeted, I am happy to inform you, all the people living their Suburban Lifestyle Dream, <laughs> capitalized S, L, and D in Suburban Lifestyle Dream, that you will no longer be bothered or financially hurt by having low-income housing built in your neighborhood. 
That's beautiful. Right on. Your housing prices will go up based on the market and crime will go down. I have rescinded the Obama Biden AFFH rule. Enjoy from real Donald Trump. And I told you guys last week about this because Dr. Ben Carson, the head of HUD, Housing and Urban Development, I don't know why there's a department in the gov- federal government called Housing and Urban Development. I mean, actually, I kind of do because America is a communist country and we're trying to bring it back to being a free country. Thank you to Trump and to Dr. Ben Carson. But over the years, Jesse Lee Peterson, when I was producer, had reported about Obama doing this thing called redistribution of ghettos, right? That's what we call it, Jesse and I. (laughs) And they have been taking some poor people and saying, you just need to get out of this bad community. There's too much crime, there's not enough opportunity, and so we need to put you in this middle, upper middle class area with subsidized housing. And therefore, your children and you can live in a peaceful place where you will have more opportunity. And there is honestly more opportunity when your neighbors are decent people. But if you're an indecent person, you will squander the opportunity. You'll make it worse for everybody around you. And that's what happens in these so-called low-income housing. And low-income housing is another word, I think, for subsidized housing. As you all know, I think, which we learn from uh, the late, great white history hero. Can you look up this lady, Dr. Phyllis? No, not Dr. Phyllis, P-H-Y-L-L-I-S, I think. Schlafly, S-C-H-L-A-F-L-Y. If you can keep up with that. P-H-Y-L-L-I-S, S-C-H-L-A-F-L-Y. Phyllis Schlafly of Eagle Forum. One of the things that she found at Eagle Forum, right, she was against the ERA, which is the Equal Rights Amendment, which they're still pushing to this day, I think. I think they're trying to pass a constitutional amendment. Look at this beautiful lady. She has died. They called her an anti-feminist, and she was against the feminists. She was a decent lady. She has appeared on the Jesse Lee Peterson show multiple times. Jesse Lee Peterson, I think, has spoken at her, um, for her organization. Eagle Forum, which still lives on today, but she was not for it. There she is as a young li- younger lady with this Stop ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment. Ms. Carter, referring to <laughs> Jimmy Carter's wife. Please obey Article 5. I don't know what that is a reference to. But, you know, there's this lady right next to her, dressed up as a soldier, pretending to be a, um, a wounded soldier, because... The ladies, these ladies do not want to get drafted. They do, they know better than to want so-called equality, which is a lie. (laughs) Isn't this lady beautiful? (laughs) Uh, If only I were older. (laughs) Just kidding. Um, She already got, she got married, had kids, but a beautiful woman. She's now died though, died a few years ago. Phyllis Schlafly, but one of the things that she pointed out was, I learned this from her or her website, Eagle Forum, uh, that subsidized housing, that's when the government's paying for it, uh, it only increases the costs of housing for the rest of us. So, it's a scam. Same thing as uh, what they call... um, Minimum wage. I've made this point already pretty recently. But thank you to um, Dr. Ben Carson. He was criticized and Trump was criticized for appointing Dr. Ben Carson to be the head, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. Because these radicals had been used to having their way with this communist moving people around social, they call it social engineering, right? Where they move a, a... move a poor, black, so-called family, usually like a single mother with a kid or two, into a richer white community, and it's just like the busing, right? Integration. Busing the poor kids up to the nicer, 
um, school has been going on a lot, and it doesn't make anybody any better for it. It's just a bunch of mixing people together and see how it, how it works. They're just they're not addressing the spirit because they're unspiritual people, very sick, very sick people. Uber Eats is also sick. Show that that those screenshots about Uber Eats, disgusting. Um, I got this email from Uber Eats. I think I'm gonna be boycotting them from now on. Just go to Subway. Not that Subway is that good. I think they stand for the illegals too. <laughs> you can't do anything. Can't buy any food from decent people. Postmates. <laughs> They're all evil. I think I think I've seen BLM messaging from. I could be wrong. I've certainly seen it from Lyft, from Uber, from... Anyways, Uber Eats and Wings Showdown uh, has been promoting this thing called... Uh, called Center for Policing Equity, and they're donating to them. Center for Policing Equity has been around like 10 years. Uses science to promote justice, and they, when they say justice, they mean fake social justice. And, um, it's headed by this black guy named Dr. Philip Ativa Goff. G-O-F-F. -F. Yeah, and all month Uber Eats has been pushing to order from black-owned businesses. <laughs> this Dr. Philip Ativa Goff, and they're, oh, they're, um, what was that little quote that you had? Our outcomes. This is what Chris Burbank, who's a former police chief and... Vice President of St Strategic Partnerships of CPE. A police chief, you know it's a Democrat, basically. If you hear of somebody as a police chief, they're not a cop. They may have been a cop at one point, but they're a politician. And they are an, an enemy of the people frequently. And he says, our outcomes can no le be no less than fewer people killed, fewer people in jail. No. You want what's right. Well... A decent person wants what's right, whether that means more people in jail, whether that means more people killed, that's fine. Because sometimes the death penalty is a valid penalty. But he's referring to people, fewer people getting killed on the street. They shouldn't be attacking the cops, they should be attacking the immorality and the hatred and the fear mongering being pushed in the black community, but they're not sane people. Center for Policing Equity releases critical steps for exploring how public safety resources are allocated. That's a defund the police code speech, right? Center for Policing Equity's statement on the tragic death of George Floyd. This Dr. Philip Atiba Goff released a statement about it. And to be honest, this guy is not for what's right. And you already know that anything that Uber Eats promotes, you know it's going to be degenerate. <laughs> you just know it. So, like, I even had to tell you about this. But this is who they're promoting, and he did a TED Talk. That's another red flag. <laughs> There's one TED Talk that was legit. I hear I haven't seen it. And that was by, what's that guy, Hyde? <laughs> Sam Hyde? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy says, uh, G.K. Newcomb says, Sam Hyde did the only TED Talk worth watching. I haven't seen it, but anyways. <laughs> uh, Uber Eats is sick. What a shame. And so, I don't know whether Postmates is any better, or Grubhub, or any place. <laughs> you really can't go anywhere. I was thinking about, there was this, back when I was a kid, we were boycotting Vons, and I don't remember exactly why. I think they had they were selling Playboys or something, or else it was just that they were trying to buy my elementary school. <laughs> and we were also boycotting 7-Eleven, because 7-Eleven sells beer, maybe. <laughs> or they sell porno magazines and let kids buy beer with fake IDs and stuff like that. 7-Eleven had a bad rap, and now 7-Eleven seems clean compared to these people. Except sometimes you just don't want to go around there because there's shady people hanging around outside or whatever. Or hanging around inside. Anyways, <laughs> I gotta get back to some calls. Robert in Kansas has been hanging on for some time. Robert, appreciate you holding. What's up? 
Oh, the earth flat, James. That's what's <laughs> up, man. So I want to wish you a white history month and all that. It's almost over, right? That sucks. Yeah. That's, uh, that's awesome what Jesse did. You know, I think that uh, it, it's not like to me, it's kind of funny. Like it's kind of a joke. At the same time, it points at these other months and these other things we celebrate and it kind of does like that mirror effect where you kind of just point a mirror at it where maybe we shouldn't have any of these things and we should just celebrate history, right? So uh, I like that aspect of it. I think it's pretty pretty genius. Yeah, and um, in all honesty, it is heartwarming. There have been ladies who've called in, and I feel the same way, honestly, that it is, not, it is much appreciated that somebody shows love and appreciation for white people, especially the historical white people who should be honored and they're being dishonored in the country right now. Look at all these Confederate monuments and other monuments. Honorable men being dishonored. With this George Floyd, I haven't seen the, I think I've seen like this thing on it, but they were doing this hologram of George Floyd being cast on these Confederate monuments. What a slap in the face to anybody who's decent, whatever race you are, it's ridiculous. Anyways, man, that's yeah, my feeling they, on white history. Man. They, they tore down a Frederick Douglass statue, I guess, because <laughs> it was it was worn, you know, so you couldn't really tell the color. And I guess his face wasn't uh, his face wasn't black enough for them to know it was a black man. And I'm sitting there going, you know, you people who tore that down, you couldn't hold that man's cup of water, so to speak, you know? Right. Frederick, Douglass would, Frederick Douglass would put you in your place so fast with your nonsense, your your head would spin. Yeah. And so they, they don't even know what they're doing, man. They're, they're, they're retarded, basically. Um, that is true. Uh, and some of, them, some of them act like they know the, what they're talking about, because all these academics, they give these hit, slanted, cherry-picked histories, talking about, oh, this was a slave owner, George Washington was a slave owner, and whatever. Ridiculous. You're right. They they are even the educated ones are are pretty dumb. Anyways. Well yeah, man. They point at someone like Washington and they're like, Oh, he was bad. He <laughs> killed people in the night and he, he had slaves and he did all this and I'm sitting there going, If you fa- if you break away from the, the British Empire, you better be a bad mother. You yeah. better be a killing crazy son of a gun, boy, <laughs> if you're gonna break away nervous. from the biggest empire on the face of the planet. You know, like it's right. they, they don't know history, they don't know what it takes for men when they really stand up what that means. And they just think, Oh, these were bad men. Yeah, they were bad men. That's why they got all that stuff done. Yeah, you know, Jackson. Jackson was one of the baddest dudes ever to exist. Andrew and they're Jackson like, he did all this. Yeah, you know, he did all this bad stuff. Yeah, dude, he held together a nation. Right. And and just it's unbelievable what the guy actually did. And he did it for black people. He did it for white people. He did it for Americans. Period. And, and they you, just act like, oh, he's so evil. It's ridiculous. And, and to this day, we're reaping the rewards of he ex- he helped expand the United States. And you know, you make a great point. It's really a female-minded attack on men. It's not just an attack on whites. It is definitely an attack on whites, an attack on America, an attack on sanity, an attack on what's right, but it's also an attack on men and what it takes to conquer. They're, they're conquering America in a female way through shame and false guilt and fear and intimidation, whereas these men conquered for America in a, in a manly way for the most part, right? <laughs> through deals and through fighting and whatever. Anyways, yeah. It's a different time, man. They pretty much outlawed uh, masculinity and, and made us turn right. from violence. They, they maintain certain kinds of violence, like like abortion and other sort of uh, yeah. you know very e- evil things in our society. Divorce, I think, divorce is a almost a violent act towards the family, and females do that at a rate of what eighty percent of divorces initiated. Are, are, are initiated by the female. Yeah. Um, so, man, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about these sort of laws in place where being a man, you don't even have control of your family. You don't have control of your woman. And this is all a structural, legal 
uh, construct that has destroyed. They destroyed the black family first, I think, is like a beta test, and then they and then they just exported that out into society in general yeah. um, to to take away the rights of men. So then you don't have basically what what is human leadership and that protection of the masculine. Yeah. So then the evil the evil can come in and it can convince the woman of. I mean, if you scare a woman, Hake, you can convince her to give up her guns, give up her kids, give yeah. up, like if you scare her enough. Where a man will stand and fight, but they try to say, oh, well, that's evil now. If you stand up and fight for what's good, now you're the one who's wrong. And, and they just try to treat man. A man is what? The image of God? So they try to treat all men as this is the example of evil, while they promote women, they promote perverts, they promote everything that is, that is actually evil, while telling you that what is good is evil. Men are all rapists, and they're all bad, and all this stuff. You know, man— really you this know, it's ridiculous. This reminds me of last night on the Sunday service Bond Sunday service premiere. I think it was when I when he said this. Jesse Lee Peterson was you know doing the Sunday service at Bond, two thousand nine, and he said about how easy it is to deceive women. Me, women will go along with anything wrong. All you and he said all you have to do is cry <laughs> and be like. I can't help it, or whatever, if you're, like, a homosexual or whatever. Just cry, and then they'll feel sorry for you and let you stay. Or if you're an illegal alien, or you're a, or a mother of a black criminal, or whatever. <laughs> you, know, you just have to well, cry, and they'll feel sorry for you and be on your side against the bad white man or the bad cop well, or whatever. Absolutely, Hey, Here's the thing, brother. There is a role for the nature of the woman, right? The, yeah. the goddess, where, where we all come from, right? That we all love, okay? We do. We love women. But the thing is, is that their role is not to be a head, the head of a family, the head of a, yeah. a community or a nation or a governor or something like that. That is not their role. A woman's role is so powerful in the role of daughter, wife, mother, and they can produce, man, they can produce 10 kids, and those kids can have 100 kids. The effect of a woman uh, moving forward in time, she could, she could create a new civilization from, from, her, from what women do. Women are what, what us men basically do everything for. But like when you see houses, when you see roads, when you see everything that men build, basically we built it all for a woman. I mean, us guys, <laughs> we, could, we could go live in a hole in the ground. We'll be fine. But if you want a woman to be happy and you want a nice family and you want things to be good, you got to build that woman something that's nice. But what they've done is they, we've built all this stuff for women. And, and now they're, they're tearing women. it down. Well, no, they, now they're taking women out of their role, so we built all this stuff for them. Now they say, oh, go to the workforce, don't raise your kids, the family's destroyed. It's and destroying. now we're living in that society where the, the kids don't have parents, and you see what that, the result is, right? Yeah, it's destroying civilization. Robert, I appreciate it, man. Great call. Let's talk all again. Right, hey, we, didn't, we didn't get to anything, but I'll call you again, brother. Have okay, <laughs> appreciate all it, right, man. Bye. 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 You know, man, you know, guys, I was thinking about how... Um, these guys are talking about how the, you know how this, they're, the blacks are saying that we're the real Israelites? And I was reading to you from the book John 5, how it says the Jews were trying to kill Jesus because he was healing on the Sabbath. So is that saying that the blacks were trying to kill Jesus? Huh. I'm just curious what they think. Are thinking in that sense or were they thinking that those were the white Jews that were trying to kill Jesus are they gonna disavow everything <laughs> that uh, bad that they were doing but uh, you know even those black Hebrew Israelites that I've heard they do blame themselves for this situ the situation that they're in but it's odd that they think that it they're they still think that they're victims of whites and they think white supremacy is so real such a delusion such a delusion It's crazy. Anyways. <laughs> Man. This John... Oh, Obama's finally talking. With his... He's almost as dead in the soul as Don Lemon. You know how he's been talking? Too much? You can bet he's going to talk too much. And you know, back in the day... The conservative media would point out how much he would reference I, I, me. 
because <laughs> he was very self-centered. But the mainstream media didn't notice that because they loved a black liberal commie socialist, right? Um, Anti-American, anti-Christian. America is not a Christian nation, at least not just. And, you know, you have these sleazy, fake Christians talking like, oh, yeah, he's such a good leader. And even people like, I was shocked to hear that, but yet not shocked. There's this other podcast host who's leaving the state of California. And, you know, he's respected by many people. I like him. I respect him. Very popular guy. He announces during MMA fights and stuff like that. Talented guy. Liked by everybody. But he's a far left guy. He thinks that Obama was the best president, even better than Clinton. <laughs> what the heck? You gotta be blind. Um, suckers. It shows you that people are really suckers. And, you know, he was, um, Robert from Kansas was talking about, he said we didn't get to anything. <laughs> he was talking about how the, the women kind of, I guess, sit back and make the babies and then men build civilization. And now we're turning civilization over to the women and they're destroying it. It's been happening for a long time. And it's accelerating. Yeah, I was talking about Joe Rogan. <laughs> And it's accelerating, just destroying stuff. And there's pe people are so fake. AOC and all them. So phony. New Jersey, I told you guys in Hake News that New Jersey could release 20% of their prisoners to avoid this COVID infection. And you know who's pushing it? Of course, the American Civil Liberties Union. What a shame. What a surprise, right? More like un-American Civil Liberties Union. By the way, I am opening the treasure chest shortly here. <laughs> Supposedly, 3,000 inmates, more than 3,000 inmates in the state of New Jersey, not a big state, by the way, are within a year of their release and the anti-American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, Amol Sinha, A-M-O-L-S-I-N-H-A, Amol Sinha is executive director of ACLU of New Jersey. I'm curious what she looks like. Can you Google AMOL, new word, Sinha, S I N H A? Um, is a executive director. Probably sounds like a female, but I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Definitely a female minded person in terms of like the wrong mindset of the females, right? It would not p permit the release of most sex offenders, but some apparently will be released. I still can't tell, almost. <laughs> That's a dude. That's a dude. It looks like he's probably about my age, or maybe even Joel's age. Um, this is guy's... I think it's a dude. Definitely has some whiskers. Looks... I don't know. It has this slightly effeminate effect to him for some reason. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Teddy bear type of a face. Maybe, uh, you know, there's some people whose um, hormones, they, like their masculine hormones get blocked in some way. And they come out kind of looking a little bit like this. Or maybe it's just he's a little overweight and too much soy or something. Soy is, like, supposed to be not good for men. <laughs> but anyways... This guy is executive director of ACLU New, L ACLU New Jersey, so he has must have some worldly sense of leadership ability. Very charming person, probably, right? Sick. A sick person. Wanted to release the inmates to protect them from COVID, right? It would not permit the release of most sex offenders, but some, apparently. And would apply to inmates sentenced for other violent crimes, including murder. Um, also, this is not just happening. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not a surprise. In California, the governor, um, you know, that guy, Gavin Newsom, he, or, he ordered the release. I got to open the treasure chest, by the way. 
of 8,000 nonviolent offenders by the end of August. Connecticut's prison population has dropped by 16% since March. Connecticut is another small state, but that's a lot. Um, to the lowest levels in 29 years, <laughs> Joel says, Obama won't shut up. <laughs> Obama, speaking of lack of justice, these people supported the attacks on cops, attacks on decent men like Trump. Obama is the one who gave the Presidential Medal of Freedom to uh, John Lewis, right? And he also gave it to some fake pastor who also died, I think, the same day as John Lewis, or right around the same time. This pastor, whatever, 95-year-old man, black dude, I think. And he got a med presidential medal of freedom from Obama, which honestly, I don't think that that's an honor to get a, a so-called presidential medal of freedom from the worst president who was hurting America. By supporting the lies of Black Lives Matter, having Black Lives Matter scumbags, including the far-left radical homosexual guy, DeRay McKesson, over to the White House, having this sleazy, everybody knows he's a sleaze, Al Sharpton, to the White House dozen, three dozen times or something like that. Yeah, I would love to recall Gavin Newsom as governor of the uh, California I heard that there is a push for it. You know, Jesse Lee Peterson does speaking engagements, and he did a speaking engagement over Zoom over the weekend. And I heard in some Republican club that they're pushing to recall Newsom. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll happen. I chuckle because Republicans, um, on the whole, especially the so-called leadership, you know, the ones who get elected to office, don't seem very strong in California. And they just seem like kiss-ups. Jesse Lee Peterson spoke against this bail reform law a year or two ago. Some excerpts of it are on Jesse Lee Peterson's YouTube channel. And I think it may also be up on his BitChute channel. B-I-T-C-H-U-T-E. Oh, I gotta open the treasure chest. I keep on forgetting. Um... And he was the strongest voice, and of course, right, he's a very strong voice, right? You're, you're not going to get stronger than him necessarily, but you'll have, like, at least have somebody agreeing with him. People were dis- there, was, we, there were so-called Republican, uh, operative- I don't forget what you call them, right? Um, lobbyists, I think you call them. Talking about- oh, shoot, I gotta go. <laughs> they were talking about- you shouldn't have said that you- you shouldn't have called that guy racist because Jesse Lee Peterson said, You hate- you hate black people. You don't respect black people. Referring to this liberal or getting rid of money bail system. Anyways, I gotta go. Um, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> TheHakeReport.com for my stuff. JesseLeePeterson.com for Jesse's stuff. TheGiftedOfDance.com for uh, Joel Friday here. And congrats to the luckiest followers on the D-Live treasure chest winners. Dark Side of the Bear, what? Thank you for the faithful support. Um, those of you who have been muted or suspended or banned and whatever, cut them some slack. <laughs> Based America first, Base AF. Take care of Business Bear, fan of the ladies, and Big Mamajas. Or Big Mamajas. Thank you guys for the support. Congrats. I'll see you guys later. Take care.